Canada will lose what's left of our sovereignty. You know, I am in politics because I believe that government should look after the public interest. And more and more, it became apparent to me that that's not what was happening. And that was from my perspective as a Victoria City Councillor. And I decided to, to run for federal politics, to fight for some of those values that I think everybody here shares. And, and certainly, the SPP is part of that, that agenda. I'd like to talk about to, to talk about why SPP we, that we need to say no to SPP. It's not just something that we choose to do. I think it's a responsibility that we have as Canadians to, to, to really look at where we're going as a country. It was really a surprise to me. I was going through the budgetary estimates. Uh, that the government hands down, and, and I came to a section that talked about an issue that I've worked on uh, long years in Victoria on, on reducing uh, pesticide use. And in this uh, budgetary estimates, there was a, sh a note about uh, allocating funds to deal with harmonization of our pesticide regulations. Again, those boring regulations, right? Um, and uh, so th there was an allocation of funds to address the issue of harmonization of pesticides. And why? And it's stated in the budgetary estimates, to remove those trade irritants. And what the government isn't saying is that at the mo the United States has one of the lowest standards in compare, if you compare it to Europe, for example, on uh, standards that have been established for pesticides. So th this is about reducing our standards, and that's wrong. That's simply wrong. And pesticides is only one of the 300 areas that are going to be looked at from the back door through regulatory mechanisms. What we're saying is that we have to bring this debate, this substantive debate, back to Parliament, where Canadians can see clearly what, is, what the issues are. Because right now, the only people who have access to that information is this uh, North American competitive this council and made up of, I, I've got a list of the, the CEOs and the major companies that are represented there. So it isn't democratic and that's the first reason to say no to it. There will be no vote in Parliament, um, that's what we're asking for, but at the moment no vote in Parliament. The Conservative government, government, as I say, is trying to keep the whole process behind closed doors. We know that from our access to information, many of our access to information requests that come back almost blacked out, um, where we know what is being discussed. Uh, uh, the local Minister of Natural Resources, Gary Lund, with his uh, counterpart, American counterpart. Yes, it's not just Chalk River. There are many reasons to get rid of them, but uh, certainly that's one of them. Discussions about bulk water, and I, I'd like to uh, the export of, of bulk water, and, and I'd like to touch on that because um, there is a quote here that I think is worth um, is worth mentioning. We know that water was barely saved uh, by NAFTA, but we now know, because of these access to information, that it's clearly on the table. The North American Future 2025 project, and pay attention to that, the project leader, Armand Petchard Sverdrup, said that last year, and I quote, it's no secret that the U.S. is going to need water. It's no secret that Canada is going to have an overabundance of water. Well, you just have to read Maud Barlow to, to uh, and, and scientists around, uh, throughout Canada to know that that's not true. Um, at the end of the day, he says, again, part of the quote, there may have to be arrangements. Now, we know that that is part of the agenda 
of meetings, for example, that occurred last year in Calgary, and uh, we were present there, and we must fight that. That is uh, an important, that is crucial to our future. I said SBP will touch over 300 separate initiatives and health care, uh, energy, our security, so-called security. And let, let's talk about security because it seems to me that we've forgotten what the meaning of security is. Uh, you know, in, in Ottawa, there, there's a push for GMO, for terminator seeds. We've introduced a, a bill that I've seconded uh, against terminator seeds. To, this morning in Victoria at the conference center, there were thousands, and I, I, I kid you not, throngs of people who attended CD Saturday. Well, that's the grassroots response to things like Terminator seeds that the big, like Monsanto, want to ensure that they control ultimately because that means those are seeds that are basically sterile, so you can't continue the, the, the tradition that has been passed on for centuries of you know, passing on seeds, seeds that uh, are going to become ever more important to plants that are going to become ever more important in the face of climate change. So those are the kinds of issues that we have to fight. Canada will lose its ability and, and that is part of the SPP agenda. Canada will lose its ability to regulate its own policies, to make its own regulations. And that's a real concern with SVP. That's one, another reason to say no to it. We are already, unlike Mexico, we've, we've signed off on our ed energy uh, by accepting what's called the proportionality rule. So no matter how much energy we need, uh, we have to, we have to, not we, we can, we have to export, uh, according to this rule, under NAFTA, uh, our energy. And this is without having our own energy plan. Another reason to say no to NAFTA. Uh, civil rights, we've all heard about the no-fly lists. Uh, that includes over 750,000 people, including at least one senator and, and even a couple of MPs from, from Canada. And this sort of erosion of civil rights will become mandatory for Canada under SPP. Another reason to say no. It does not mean prosperity. It simply means reduction of standards. Um, in fact, when NAFTA, are, 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 according to Statistics Canada, um, since 1989, when NAFTA has been uh, signed, we have ca Canadians are working lo longer hours, more over time, for less pay. I believe we can shift the debate from the corporate agenda of privatization fewer regulations, less protection for Canadians towards protection of what is in the public interest, towards fair and sustainable trade policies which respects people and the environment. We've held as a party over 50 public meetings across Canada and that's growing and there's going to be more in Vancouver this week, uh, two in Vancouver. We've organized, aside from the public meetings, we've also brought the issue to this standing committee, which forced a vote on the House on banning uh, the sale of bulk water. And this is important for you to know. All the Conservatives voted against our motion. Um, about 20 Liberals were either, either abstained or, or were not present and the motion still passed. Our water is not protected under NAFTA, and it is even less protected under SPP. I believe we can change the agenda by having meetings like that and to create more awareness. So thank you very much. Write letters, because it does make a difference.